Hey, you guys. Welcome, welcome to another haunted episode of Tea Time. And today we've got our guest, a very funny comedian. Guess what, Mateen Stewart? What's up? What's up? What's up, Tea Time? Whoa! What's up? Any relation to actress Kristen Stewart? No, no relation to Kristen Stewart. I'm not even related to one of your uh, other guests, Trey Stewart. Oh, my God, not even related. Wow. And we're both from Detroit, and we're no relation. Wow. Look at that. Maybe somewhere, but. Maybe along yeah. the yeah okay yeah. that's wild yeah look at that no Kristen Stewart no John Stewart? Stewart no I could have sworn there was some John Stewart a little John maybe I don't know <laughs> yeah. I don't think so he's Jewish I'm not Jewish mm-hmm. okay yeah mm-hmm. are any of y'all Jewish my she, 23 and me said Ashkenazi Ashkenazi mm-hmm. Ash, Ashkenazi isn't it it just flows off the tongue yeah isn't it like a very common thing for people of European descent to be Ashkenazi. Um, if they're Ashkenazi, I think. Am I, saying, am I, <laughs> I saying it wrong? No, I don't know how to say it. I don't You're either. It right. But it is funny that Nazi is in the word. Yeah, I wasn't gonna say that, but oh, yeah, you can say it's it. right there. Yeah, <laughs> Do you, have you done a twenty-three me? My brother has, so, and it's like ninety percent Neanderthal. So oh, wow, we really love that. Really, ninety <laughs> percent. Yeah, that's why our forehead. But yours so could be different. It could be. It could that be. is true. Yeah. No, I haven't personally done it yet. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the poor Neanderthals. I know. I did ne- one. Neanderthals is actually. Neanderthals, yeah. yeah. No, wait a minute. Because yes. I just have to, I can't let this go on for a minute longer. Yeah. yeah. Mateen got Gabby a present, you guys. Yes. Yeah, so and we need to. Wait, is this present for me for or you. is it for the, the. It's for you. And. Um, really? No, because I got, I got, I got you the gypsy. Yeah. So you got me a, um, a painting of Gypsy Rose Blanchard, yes. you know, my, my girl. And it's so beautiful, and I can't wait to get it framed. Yeah, because I didn't know that's who really... she was until you started bringing her. How around. did you not know who she was? I, that's not my. That's not the woman that circle. made it out. Yeah, yeah. She took a mommy <laughs> issue and found a mommy knows. solution. I didn't, I didn't know anything about it. Wow, yeah, 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 she's yeah, good. Yeah. Wow. So when I was in Kansas City, uh, this comic had all these paintings, so I bought a bunch of them. And it was one with gypsies. I was like, oh, here's this for you. And I kind of thought you were kidding when you messaged me. You're like, oh, I got you. I was like, ah. (laughs) And then when we did that show together this past Tuesday, you actually legitimately had it. How do you feel that now all of these things are coming out about her being like evil? Like we all thought it would happen. I mean, she she's of course she's a little bit evil yeah yeah i mean I, but she's also a byproduct of her environment her environment and her mom tortured her so much and so her like, grandpa fucked her in a shed so yeah. i don't is really, that true yeah it is she true got fucked in a shed by her grandpa before yeah. mom even started that stuff yeah no, exactly i did not know that now well, see look who knows all about gypsy road well, exactly to, i went down a, when you find something out you got to go down this rabbit go hole. down the, yeah. yeah did you watch the the lifetime series that came out i did not watch the lifetime okay series. when I watched that on did a the flight. grandpa yeah. fuck her when she was like four years old she was little yeah she was a little kid and he was busting her open no yeah was it the mom's dad i think it was the dad the dad's dad, oh I god think. so she's just like on both sides of the family of yeah and then the mom took her and then they had to sleep in the same bed every single night and she would like handcuff her to the bed okay so, so she had to be a little bit fucked up so like gotta be a little bit do i up. think she had she- more to do with the murder than she let on 100 percent. but yes. you know a queen well, had to do what a queen had to do and then had to do what a queen M- had to do. mateen got um this is really kate. nice mateen. yes i listen to kate Ma- yeah. and trevi's podcast and they're always shitting on tall guys so yeah. i got her i work with a brand um good shirts and i there was a short king hat yeah so i was like well now you live in the same house i can't not bring yeah. you something yeah yeah because um, you were the missing piece and yeah. now that's really sweet complete, that's very thoughtful complete the trifecta okay yeah, well yeah, let's yeah. see better not be it better not be fucking bad i think it's, no i think it's, it's good it better be really <laughs> I, listen, I have been i have been listening to the podcast wait uh now I came now on. i have a lot of <laughs> wait okay so the preparation age this is great now <laughs> like said, why the bubbles i've been listening to the podcast you guys always seem so sad and bubbles always make me happy <laughs> And then you guys do, okay, and then Listerine. Well, do, I, well, do, you, do you think you, I have bad breath? No, you guys, yeah, you guys were shitting on guys with bad breath. So that's really yeah, you're yeah. really attentive. Yeah, yeah, this yeah, is okay, really so nice. Mateen is attentive. So you went to Rite Aid and you said, "Let me get some gifts." Well, no, yeah, I wanted to make sure I came bearing gifts. No, that's he, he really Amazoned sweet. this. Oh, you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, really yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's really nice. You got this in you know a couple of hours, probably. <laughs> yeah. No, he fast tracked <laughs> that. Wait, do we? Okay, you said that we always seem really sad. Yeah, you guys are like talking about being <laughs> sad a lot. A lot and of it's times. good to so know. Bubbles are yeah. bubbles always make you happy. So like anytime uh, you, so I used to be a behavioralist when I worked with 
a lot of kids with like a lot of wow you're a behavioralist so sometimes when you're you're having like a sad moment or a bad day you know blow bubbles that's nice no one's ever gonna be sad blowing bubbles no no one's ever like fuck these bubbles (laughs) okay i cannot wait to try that out it's just a time it's just oh it's a de-escalating thing if you get like anxious or or things like that so why bubbles and not i don't know like molly too (laughs) much too much but you're so i know you're sober yeah but yeah yeah i guess because like that we have like an interesting So like almost four years ago, uh-huh. you did the podcast that I was hosting called uh, Like a Virgin. You were my With first- With Meredith. Yeah. Yeah. And it was the 11th of March. It was right before everything shut down. Oh, was shit. I sober yet? Yes. No, you had just got your, you just had your little incident. I did? I think so. Well, you were blowing in the thing in your car. It was, and it was before the pandemic- March 11th. That was that because we were supposed to have a show that night and we ended up canceling the show. Okay. But we still did the podcast that day. Wow. Oh, shit. Yeah, like a virgin. That, that lasted like 20 episodes. <laughs> did it? You were our first, you were our first guest. It only lasted 20 episodes. Yeah. Because it was hard to do shit during the pandemic. Yeah. yeah. Podcasting is hard to be consistent with. Yeah. And then when you're like, not, this is good when you're inside, but when you're like doing it on and can, Zoom and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Oh, God, I did Zoom one on can Zoom for off. like a year and yeah. it was it was hard. Audio's always shitty. Like mm-hmm. it's, yeah. It's and then it's freezing. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. yeah. It's like, come on. Yeah. Wait. Okay. So today we're doing, what are we doing today? We're doing um, craziest uh, do it yourself oh, stories. Oh, DIY shit. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do you have anything that you've ever tried to make shift or like any kind of nasty things? Dude, dude, ugh. I don't know, man. I'm trying to think. That's that's interesting. D Y. I don't know. I always fuck it up. It's D I Y. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Like I don't know. I like that you said you always fuck it up. Like you're always talking about no, because I always stuff. say I always say D Y I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. D Y I. Yeah. Because I'm kind of dyslexic. An I D. Uh, um. No, never. Nothing too crazy. There are times when like. Like if you're like if you don't have a condom or something, you're like, can I use a plastic bag? You know, like, <laughs> okay. Nobody uh, have no. you ever once in I your know, life have you it. ever stuck a fucking glad in a Ralph's, bag in a Ralph's bag? Yeah. A Febreze scented yeah. glad bag yeah. in a fucking snatch. I'm talking about years ago. No, no, I'm gonna go. Ew. No. Did you actually? No, no, I never did. I mean you think about it. Saran you, get, wrap? you get you get desperate. Saran wrap's another one you think about, could it work? Yeah, absolutely not. Can you imagine how horrific that would be? No, no aluminum foil. No, that that come on. That's just like come some on. saw shit. Come on. Yeah, that I, is. You didn't go that, that is. That's that cruel and unusual. Yeah. Come on, it'd be fun. Okay, um, but wait, come did on. you start your own marriage business or what was? Yeah, so when I I have a marriage business, it's called Married by Mateen. Now so, wait, what the damn fuck is a marriage business? So I am a full service. So you can I DJ and I MC weddings and I. And yeah, then, <laughs> I love that you do. Okay, and so then, and wait. then go ahead. No, no, I was just gonna say, like, when you emailed me, okay, you sent me some really sweet, um, yeah, like files because you had listened to our sad episode. Yeah, look- and so, <laughs> hence the bubble. Uh, wait, what was the sad episode? That, that's a loop. Wait, yeah, there's which so many one was the sad? The one where which I, one really? I had gone on those shit fuck dates. Yeah, the date oh, so like with recently. the waiter. With the waiter. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, um, and then you were like, hey, like I actually send these to clients, and like yeah, I, you know, yeah. I married a bunch of people over the pandemic. And when you said that to me, because I didn't know this part of your lore, yeah, she I thought, thought it was you like a Nigerian I, prince. I, I thought you had just <laughs> gone through a bunch of marriages, <laughs> no, and I was like, oh, oh, okay, oh, Mateen, no, like, no, all right, no, no. <laughs> so yeah, married by Mateen. I so I I was during the pandemic. I I had like eighteen or seventeen cancellations for me DJing, MCing. So I was people still needed officiants. So I went to. 60 bucks yeah i went online got the thing and then i went through all these like uh like certifications for like relationship coach and all this other shit because it's it looks good you know if people but you you don't have to have like a degree in psychology no you don't know you can go through like because during a pandemic you have so much time you could just go online you can get certified in almost anything like there's courses coursework for almost anything to be like a marriage counselor yeah you don't really? Without really? having a degree. Yeah, you could get... Oh, that's you, horrifying. You get, like, it is horrifying. You can ruin How? people's lives. Do you think you were good at it? I think I'm good at it because I'm I'm, I know people. Yeah. Like, and being a behavioralist, and I was an educator for a long time, but okay. I, I, I think that I'm good with it. I, I do like the idea of love in itself. So I think it's one thing that everyone will have and yeah it's, it's so many different levels of it so yeah like, mm-hmm. you can love your mom you can love your dad you can love your well, partner yeah. i don't know about the mom you can one. love pizza oh, this yeah, you guys, yeah you guys Wait, see, i know your I know. daddy I, issues were mommy issues yeah yeah yeah, yeah, daddy yeah, issues? yeah. i mean 
my dad, my dad had a, some issues, he on his own issues, but yeah. he also had a very traumatic life. And yeah, well, don't they all? As a tortured parent, as a man, I understand my dad a lot more yeah. than I did as a kid. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Because a man goes through this thing where it's like, oh yeah, I, you know, I, I resent my dad for stuff, and then you start thinking like, oh, he's wrong for everything. But then when you become an adult, you're like, oh, maybe. I understand him a lot more. Yeah, you know. it's very empathetic. It's a hard yeah. thing because I re- I understand that about my mom because she's such a tortured fucking bitch of a woman. But I also understand that she came from like a very traumatic mm-hmm. household and blah blah blah. She has all of her own issues, but at the same time, I'm like, yeah, but I can't really be too closely associated with it yeah. right now. So it's like an interesting thing to have empathy and understanding for somebody, but also being like, I cannot have you near me. Yeah, I mean, and and I think because I lost my mom in 2020 and. It was a thing where it's like, my dad's my only parent now, so the stakes are a lot higher Ah, as far as building our relationship together. So we've become a lot closer since I lost my mother, and I think that's a natural progression. And that's another thing that I'll always remember. You you have this core memory in my psyche because (laughs) you guys didn't know. So when we did that Vegas show, when I was hosting on the boat, Oh, my, oh my God, God. the God. worst show yeah, of my yeah. life. My, yeah, my mom had just died. Oh, and, yes, God, yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. that so, day. Yeah, so you guys didn't know. So my mom had just died, and oh, I had team. to do shows I in Vegas. No one knew, no that. one knew. Wow. And no one knew, and it was so funny, because I was like, I still got to do it, because she would want me to do it. So we were doing these shows in Vegas during the pandemic. Yeah. It was on a boat. It was like this, like, douchey yacht. That, oh, yeah, I remember was, she was telling me about it. Oh, I bought it was so I was, bad. I was not even like in my right space. And so we went to this like water park at this like hotel that we were at. They had a like, water park. Yeah. So everyone's getting the water, like having fun and shit. So I'm just yeah. trying to be like, I'm okay, guys. Yeah. No one knew. No one knew. Wow. And so I get into the the water slide thing and I have my glasses on. So my dumb ass go down the water slide with my glasses on. Yo, God, yeah, yes, yes. I yes. remember so this. Everyone goes, wow. and, I go, and so Brittany Schmidt, she's yelling, Mateen, your glasses. And I go, what? And when I hit the 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 lake, my glasses fly off. So yes. now my dumb ass is like blind, looking for my glasses, oh, dope. And like, no. so, all these, so, all these, so all these comics are there. So they're going to like paddleboard or whatever. So as I'm, as I'm, as I'm looking for my glasses, they're going by me in a paddleboard. Like, this fucking idiot lost his glasses. Like They're like laughing at me. Yeah. And the whole time I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, they're going to feel so, so bad when I tell them my mom died. <laughs> oh my God. They're going to feel so bad. But, um, but yeah, it was, it was something I needed to do. Um, I and can't believe yeah, you did that yeah, that day. Yeah. That's We're all wild. laughing yeah. for losing your glasses. Yeah. <laughs> You're probably crying in that disgusting lake. Yeah. It was, yeah. So, yeah, that was... Oh, that was a fun... That was that a was, fun That was a fun park. trip. That was a fun the trip. The show was awful, but the, the water park was fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was... It was. I wish we were still doing that. But, yeah, it was It was a fun time. But that that was one thing that was like, oh, yeah, this is what happened during 2020. That uh, So, yeah, during the pandemic and then that show. Forever, I'll remember you guys for that. Wow, That's not so not funny. a bad thing because you guys didn't know. So that wow. what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why did you decide to still do the fucking show? Because I mean, I, it's it's it was better than just sitting at home. Because that weekend I had a plan, so I had the show in Vegas. So I I just I did the weakest link that day, uh, the 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 day before, and I competed. I lost. But I was glad that I got picked first because before when I went, they make you sit in a room by yourself. You couldn't have your phone. You couldn't have anything. So I was like, if I don't go up in the first run of the contestants, I don't think I could stay here because there was no way I could just be in a a room smaller than this. Because during the pandemic, you had to be separated from everybody. Right. So I competed. I went through. I had my moment. And then I flew to do that show that Friday. And I had to, that weekend, I had to go do a wedding in Pennsylvania. So I wasn't going to like cancel my plans because it wouldn't have changed anything. So I did the show and then the next morning I flew to Pennsylvania to do my friend's wedding where I, I officially jam packed weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a jam packed wow. yeah. weekend. I, I do home. hear like a lot of comics saying like when they suffer a severe loss, I'm always kind of like surprised but also in awe that they do choose to For still fun. do shows that night. I'll cause I'll get out of a show if I even feel a little bit tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'll cancel. I'm like, oh my god, I can't do it. If it's too far to drive, yeah, I'm like, hey, yeah, yeah. I yeah. I mean, you get to a point, I mean, speaking of that, like when you you don't feel like it's worth it. Like I'm not gonna. Yeah. You know, if I'm, 
I, I try not to leave my house for less than 10 minutes now because it's like, why am I going somewhere for, for less than? Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. yeah. Like eight minutes. So hard. And Downey. Come on. Like, what am I doing? And Downey. <laughs> and it's free. <laughs> yeah. 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 You can have two six drinks. tater tots. Yeah. yeah literally. And, oh, yeah. and one, uh, one course. Food. I would wish more people gave you food as an option. Yeah. It's either drinks. And it really is. And then you have to drive yeah, back yeah, home yeah, and you're yeah, all yeah, fucked yeah, up. And you're like, well, now I have a 45 minute drive home and 14 drink tickets. Yeah, it was fine. I mean, it was. It, I had to do it because my I could just hear my mom like I'm already dead, so it's not gonna. Mm, it's like, it's not gonna you're not doing anything. it; isn't gonna bring me back. Yeah, it would inconvenience the show because then they would have to find another host, and it would inconvenience these people's wedding. Like, what am I gonna tell them? Oh, I'm not gonna come DJ your wedding that you've already paid for. So, yeah, so I was able to do that, but it was just like that's very noble. I having mean, again, I having like friends that. and having Brittany there that during Vegas was very like that was very helpful. Uh, Cause she was the only one that knew, uh, and I didn't tell her until after. She was the only one you knew. No, only one that, that knew, knew that. Because oh, after oh. when you guys had went out, yeah, I I couldn't find my glasses, and luckily I had contact lenses. I went to her and I was like, "Yeah, this is really a bad day." And I told her, and then she she lost it, um, Fuck. because she knew how much I love my mom, mm. and you know she didn't have the the best relationship with her. So yeah, so yeah, that that was very helpful. But yeah, I had to, as they say, show must go on. Show must yeah, go on. Yeah, truly. What your daughter was born on your mom's birthday? So no, so my, so we found out we were pregnant three months after my mom died, and mm. our due date was the same day that she died. Yeah, that was our due date. That's fucking wild. Yeah, yeah. So my daughter's name That's is Jamie wild. after my mother, um, and it turns out that Jamie means. Supplanter, which means to be replaced after death. So. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wild. And, I, and we didn't know that until. Are you afterwards. religious? I'm not really religious, but like I, I feel like there is like definitely like an energy shift and like everything that went into, you know, becoming a parent and yeah, like definitely. not really trying proactively, not trying. You weren't uh, trying to have kids. I mean, not really. Yeah. Yeah, just the medication that yeah. we took what didn't didn't take. Um, oh. So wow. surprise, surprise, yeah, surprise, surprise, yeah. yeah. So, but I'm at a pos I'm at a position now where it's like having a kid wasn't a freak out. Yeah, like it wasn't like I didn't have to worry about money. I didn't have to worry about resources. I had all those things. Yeah, where like because you're a real adult. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, and and my had my mother definitely prepared for her demise. Mm. She prepared us like financially and. Yeah. She, she it was a it was a heart attack but what i'm saying is like mm. she was she it wasn't a thing where we were like we had to do a gofundme for anything like she made sure that all her ducks were in order just in case this happened um so yeah so it wasn't like i wasn't stressed about anything so wow. so that that okay. helped a lot and yeah and i we didn't know what we were gonna have and i just knew it was gonna be jamie no matter if it's a boy or you girl. waited till she was yeah born. Yeah, yeah we waited that's till she was so born. fucking crazy yeah. that's really exciting i, I yeah. can't believe that people do that i would want to know right the fuck i don't know how y'all yeah, can do that and they had to so it was like a thing where like you have to let everyone know because they'll come in and be like oh she's she's this she's that mm -hmm. they'll start using those pronouns or uh -huh. whatever and, and we'll be like oh we don't want to know so they have to write it in our chart that we don't want to know. Why don't yeah. you? Why didn't you want to know? I don't because the excitement. I don't know. Yeah, I think I think That's so I, I the think adrenaline. The, yeah, nine months. Of get it where you can. Yeah. Get those thrills where you can. Yeah. Sweetie. It was just. Yeah. It was very. It was. I don't know. It. It was like a feeling, like no other. To just see, you know, when she came out. Wow. I'm like, yeah, it's a vagina. Yeah. Were you excited? <laughs> I was gonna say yes. Was, was a part yeah. of you disappointed that it was a girl? No. I was never disappointed it was a girl. See, I was more I was more excited that it was a girl. Interesting. Yeah, I, interesting. I, I don't know. I I feel like when you say being religious or being like thing is like the the reincarnation, you know, I lost my mom to gain my daughter, which is mm. which I think it's it it's more it's it's it is a bit more beautiful, I think. That she was a girl than if she was a boy. But, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I never something kind of godly about that. Yeah, I, and I never wanted to be one of those dudes that was like, because a lot of guys are obsessed with their sons, like super obsessed. Like, yeah, like weird. They, they want like, like, to suck him off. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, just like his daddies. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like men, women aren't like that. Like at, at no point. Well, women do so want to fuck their sons. So but I mean, yeah. as, yeah. as far as their daughters, though, like but, they're not. Yeah. Like, but then men do the weird thing too that I don't like. Of they're they're like better. I better keep the boys away from her. She's gonna be a looker. 
When guys say that, I'm like, can you stop? Shit, my daughter's looking like her mother. And you're like, okay. I think people sexualizing babies need to be kept in dog kennels. It's really like, it's so gnarly. I like I, uh, some of my cousin's friends, like when um, one of her friends had like a baby girl, they were like, oh my God, when she grows up, all the guys are going to be hopping yeah, on see, her. And, blah, 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 and I'm like, yeah. and they're going to be fucking turning her out. And you go, hey, relax. A, a lot of adults Not turning her out. <laughs> yeah. A lot of adults do that. I mean, like, Women, women do that. Is like, oh look at he's so, he's so handsome. He's my little boyfriend. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Guys can't do that. Can't do that. That's yeah. my little girlfriend. He loves <laughs> mommy's milky jugs. Can you imagine? Yeah. That's my little girlfriend. Yeah. 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 Not too much. Uh, Wait, how old are you? I'm 42. Okay, so yeah, yeah. and your daughter's how old? She's two. She'll oh, so three. you waited a, a good yeah, yeah, chunk. Yeah, like I said, it was. You said it, my my 20s and my 30s are for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I wouldn't have been ready emotionally financially uh at any other point in my life and when you lose a parent you do grow up a lot a lot faster yeah mm -hmm. you know for me my mother was like my rock and i always joke and say i love i talk so much about my mom like i was raised by her alone but my dad was there the whole time but <laughs> <laughs> he, he was there the whole time uh, but that that was like my 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 rock anytime i need anything and my brother and my sister they always call me the golden child because they don't they don't get they didn't get the shit that I got. Were but you the oldest? I am the oldest, yeah. yeah. But they they were fuck ups. They're still fuck ups. Yeah. But wow. No, love I mean, light to them. <laughs> wow. Wait, how old's your baby mama? She is I I'm, I'm not gonna say how old she is. Oh, okay. And that's my king. Yeah. I, I asked because I'm like, I'm now at the fucking age. We might have to cut that out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm at the age where I'm like trying to figure out because I'm going to be 33. I'm like, do I want to have kids? And like, if I want to, I have to like really figure it out like soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, like before, I mean, at 37, 38, it's like, the, you know. So the thing about it is women are having kids a lot older and people are having less children now. Yeah. Um, because when our parents were, everyone was getting married at like 19, 20 because mm -hmm. they didn't know any better. But we're living longer. Yeah. Science is better. Uh, it's just a matter of like, I do feel, I don't feel my age. Uh, I always, I feel younger, but. I feel like that's such a man thing though. I don't know. Because guys don't have, because like for us, we really have to figure out like. Uh, for kid wise, yes. Yeah. But I think it's like an, uh, I do believe that there's an energy. But I, but I feel like I'm like, I, I saw this meme the other day I never related to. It's like, why are everybody, why is everyone my age so old? Uh -huh. I don't, like, I don't, because a lot of my peers they they had they got married they married their college sweethearts they had kids most of them are on their second marriages mm -hmm. or their yeah, second group of family crazy. and i think a lot of that stuff yeah. ages you yeah when you Hell do yeah. all that stuff at a younger age because even when my my parents when i think of them when i think of my dad when he was 40 i'm like he was like an old man that's to old me. 40, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah that's an old 40 yeah. I, I don't i don't feel that that pressure do you also feel like because we're in comedy they're they're what am I trying to say? Do you feel like because we're in comedy, I feel like that also kind of preserves some youthfulness around us? It it does, but it, if you allow, but it also can go the other way because there mm -hmm. is this because we're very, emotionally stunted. and we're it's yeah. very it's a very ageist thing that we have decided to do. Like you know, people are like, oh, don't tell anybody you're forty, or don't tell anybody you're this. Let them just guess because yeah. people automatically judge you a certain way when they think that you're a certain way. When funny is funny, it doesn't matter yeah. how old you are because. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, comedy is about relating. So if you're 40, you could relate to 40 year olds. So, right. Yeah. Um, or anybody. But yeah. So, but there is there is this pressure to a biological that a man doesn't have that, you know, you would have to deal with. It's a nightmare. Yeah. Because now when I date too, I'm like, do I have to date with the idea of like, this might be the guy that I end up having to have kids with. So I got to yeah. make sure I don't. Well, it's, it's different than dating when you're 19. So like, you'll just like, who gives a fuck? But then, yeah, when right. you get older, you're like, oh, I could possibly die with you. So well, well, now, yeah, now I have to like really ask guys that I date. I'm like, do you want to have kids? Da, da, da. I mean, that is I, very, I that is very important. And I feel like a lot of times people are like, oh, well, we don't ask these questions on a first date or whatever. But those are the questions that you do have to ask right. as you get older, because if you are looking for a person to be your partner, those things are very important. Right. Mm -hmm. You don't want to spend like yeah. three years with somebody then have, and then by the time you're 37, they're yeah. like, I actually don't want to have kids. And you're like, well, fuck. Well, fuck. Yeah. Cause it's hard to be honest. And that's why I yeah. love that 
show love on a spectrum because this kid was I was watching it last night that that guy was like I don't want to have children and then the girl was like well I want kids he goes oh date's over (laughs) (laughs) that's why it's so good though it is because you go he's like I don't want to be in a place where I know I don't want this so if you're in that place I mean that could change but if you're if you're with a person that says no I don't want to have children and if they say that, they're not going to change their mind, more, more than likely. Yeah. I love that show so much because it's like the, the purest example of being an acceptance of someone. Because yeah. I feel like when, you know, like when like we're dating or something, we'll be like, oh, well, they said they don't want to have kids. But like, who knows? Like, let's like give it a year and then we'll see. Yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah. But it's like, I like that there's just so like, nope, you didn't say what I like. And we will keep it moving. <laughs> yeah. And you're it, like, oh. Yeah. It's so funny because they're so narcissistic. On the, like, they're all just, oh, they're just like. <laughs> oh, they the proto- are. They're so it's prototypical. So like, yeah. I don't want Fucking anything funny. else but myself. Right. They, let's talk about me. Let's talk about me. It's you know? so Because even, because they don't, it's so funny wa- trying to watch them relate to each other too. Because you could see how much they're trying to be yeah. like, I like dinosaurs. Yeah. Do you like dinosaurs? Yeah. Oh, like they I know, know that they have to ask, but they don't want to ask. They're playing it's just a pureness. Yeah. It's, so usually in a conversation, it's like a back and forth tennis conversation. But they're playing tennis, but they're hitting the ball against the wall. Yeah. yeah. To each other. Yes. So um it's that, so funny. A lot of a lot of work goes into that. A lot of you know, back in store for like social stories to get the kids and to become adults, to be able to like have these conversations. Cause they don't have that. Like, I need to listen to this person. It's just all right. I need to know. I need you to know what I need to yeah. do. I like trains. I like trains. Like, and I like, like a lot the trains. Yeah. Well, the, the blonde mother, I'm forgetting what, um, it's the, the couple that, um, and he like took her to Africa yes, or something. I forget her name. I, I started I crying when yeah. that mom Abby, was talking. Abby, yeah. yeah. And yeah. she was just like, I just didn't think my daughter was ever going to have something mm-hmm. like this. And then when she broke down, that just made me so emotional. Cause I'm like, Oh, you're probably right. Like that yeah. probably, you know, that's realistic to think it wouldn't be. It's a big burden. And that's another thing with having kids. Like there's, there is a risk to that. And that's another thing while I was like, Oh yeah, I was happy that my daughter was a girl because there's a lot of risk of like, other things that girls will have to deal with as far as like having autism and stuff like that. There's another risk that you guys have to deal with that she'll have to deal with. But I, I, periods. I yeah, with that and like just periods and tits and people murdering you. Yeah. <laughs> and, right. and just going to town on your body <laughs> yeah, when you're yeah, passed yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Assaulting yeah, me, you, yeah. not yeah, wanting yeah. to date you. If you yeah. yeah. Calling you a cum stained whore yeah, just for yeah. existing online. Yeah. 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 Your baby girl. Yeah. Welcome yeah. to digital hell, sweetie. Yes. I, I mean, I try to be cognizant of all that too, just yeah. to make sure she's aware of, you know, all those things. And there's a lot of pressure where like you get into this like thing where you tell her, oh, you're so pretty. You're so this, you're so beautiful. You're yes. so this, but you have to make sure that you also give her the things like you're smart, you're right. strong, you're, you know, independent, you're independent, you're right. capable. Yeah. yeah. It's such a balance. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. like how to build up kids self-esteem, but not to make them like, too like egotistical but also not to like you know make them too insecure i don't know like i think there's a thing that people do of like giving your kid too many compliments and then it kind of breeds like a narcissist Mm -hmm. yeah or you can do what our parents did and they can just raise us to think that we are literal pieces of yeah, actual so then you shit. Fight for your so, life and every so scuttling around. So your dad and your mom gave you guys that? Absolutely. Yeah. My parents, yeah. it's a little bit different. I know a little bit about you from the podcast yeah. that you did talking about. I don't know your situation. Me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So my parents are like <sighs> It's it's kind of it's complicated because okay. it's like it's it's back and forth. So okay. on one hand, they they love to like build me up and then immediately slice me down. Okay, like my mom will mm-hmm. always be like, "I am your biggest fan. I love you and I support you." And I'm like, "Okay, great." And then I I put something out or then like I go forward with my dream and she's like, "God, you're fucking trash. Why the fuck are you looking <laughs> like this? Put those fucking nasty tits away. You're so stupid. Look oh, at the wow. da, 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 da. Yeah. and then it's just you're like, put those oh, nasty that, tits away. Yeah, tits. Yeah, and that I'm is... like, well, I'm in a sweater, but <laughs> okay, those nasty. Put those yeah. Nasty tits away. Like is that the looks, name of your album? Put those yeah. nasty tits away. Put those away. nasty tits away. <laughs> hey. Yeah, no, it's, but it's, it's very, um, like insidious. I yeah, try not yeah, to yeah. talk about, like, I, I try not to go into like extreme detail, like, like publicly, but yeah, it's, the childhood was a little interesting, we'll say. Okay. Yeah, it was just, it's, it was very like back and forth. My parents also were alcoholics or are alcoholics. Oh, okay. So like when they were sober, it was, we would have like this sweet, nice time. And then the second they would drink, which was very, very often. It was very Dr. Jekyll. Yeah. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. So there was, yeah. there was never any stability mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, my dad became two people. He, yeah. he yeah. becomes two people, like completely. It's so scary. Different people. And it's, it, it, you know, and I, 
as a kid, it would always bother me yeah. to be like, how you were just, you're just the nicest, sweetest man. But then you, you yeah, go into this so thing. Scary. And, but when it comes to like other things is like, far as like me doing things, my parents were always super supportive. Like when I told them I wanted to be a theater major and I wanted to be perform and all this other <clears> things, <throat> they were just super, they were super supportive. Even my mom, when I told her I wanted to be a comedian, she was like, I never thought you were funny, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. But she, she was like, if you, if you, if you think you can do it, I know you can do it. So it was that kind of. That's so funny because yeah. you're literally so funny. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that's that. Thank so you so funny. much. That's also, that's the secret thing about comedians too. Like, I feel like when I decided to do it, my, my family, a lot of my family, they were like, you're funny. And I was like, I don't know, but I don't know why. Like, I guess I'm going to do this. Because you just went to like a mic. You didn't take like a class or anything. I did take a class. Oh, you did? Are you Jerry's kid? No, no. I'm not. Okay. I did. Uh, Say it. So embarrassing. I know, but you have to say it. Okay. Oh, pretty funny women. Pretty funny, pretty women. funny women. Okay, yeah, yeah. Part of me wishes I would have done a class, though. It was okay. Well, you just freeballed it. So, Mateen, I would go to open mics and I would put my name in, and then when they would call me up, I would act like I wasn't in the room because <laughs> I was so nervous. <laughs> so I did this for about three months, and I told all my because I knew I wanted to do it, yeah. and this is how I I am with certain things. Sometimes I have to force myself into yeah. things. So. I started telling my friends, I'm like, yeah, I'm doing stand up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I was like, eventually I'm gonna have to since yeah. I'm starting this yeah. lie. And I was like, I'm gonna have to force myself into it. One day I tell this lie to the wrong person and she goes, it was like in an improv class or something. And she goes, oh my God, we'll actually book a show at the Ice House. Do you wanna do my show in two weeks? And I was like, yes, <laughs> yes. So my first time ever on stage, I did was eight America's, minutes. America's first comedy club. Yeah, yeah. oh God. And America's so greatest comedy it club. Was, yeah, yeah, it was at the Ice House. And I like memorized my set in my room uh, and I still have the tape. And like the first four minutes, I'm like doing like they're cheesy, like, yeah, you know, yeah, new yeah. comic jokes, but I'm doing my jokes. And then at the four minute mark, like literally on the dot, you can see panic just come <laughs> over my face and my entire like the rest of my little script, like all my little jokes like dissipate. Yeah. And I'm like, um, and then I'm doing haunted as fuck crowd work. That is not mm -hmm. funny. And then I just get off the stage. And I'm like, bye. And then I was like, okay. Did you do the whole eight minutes? I did the whole eight minutes. Uh, yeah, right four of it was not honestly bad. The, the other four was the worst thing you've ever seen so in your you, life. you DIY your comedy you Yeah, did I did. DIY your comedy yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I and then I started class. actually showing did up to Did you do Jerry's? Mics. No, I didn't do Jerry's class. I hung out with all those kids though, but yeah. I did a class called LA Stand Ups, and I was the only person that didn't buy the Groupon. Uh, yeah. You full <laughs> and, yeah, you were just texting that yeah, you're the yeah. only one still doing yeah, it from that class. Yeah, and I'm the only one that still does it. Uh, yeah, it was like eight of us. In one class and seventy in the other, and then I only picked him because our graduation show was at the Hollywood Improv. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Period. And we did it there, and I left the stage like, ah, I'm ready, I'm ready for Conan. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. All, it's the most hacky, awful. But shit. you need that delusion. I strongly think the people that I know that like I started with that are still going have that like fucked uh, sense of delusion because mm -hmm. you you have to have that if you're going to like have the endurance to continue on yeah if you're a realist you're going to be healthier and you go oh that was a lot let me yeah. let me go do something you can't else though. Yeah, it's you have to be a certain like a special sparkly type of mentally ill yeah. to do stand-up i think it had to go that way because it didn't yeah. go that way if i would have had to do like an open mic or had no no prep Fuck I would, no no because no. we started at the the like the highest of like when you talk about adrenaline, like yeah. that was just like oh, nothing. Yeah. And I was a, I was a performer, like a theater kid, and I yeah, and I was and I always performed, but that was like something I've never ever felt before. Yeah, yeah. When you being like, out alone, it. yeah, Dude, it's your the, art. Getting God, God, getting yourself to an open mic without having taken a class, like I cannot imagine that. Yeah, because I I well, went was fucking shoehorned in with a class. I yeah. cannot imagine just going and signing up for a mic and being like, here I go. Well, I you know it was it was horrifying, Awful. and I wanted to take a class, but I was also just that's this is how deathly afraid and like I would get marked absent in uh, in school because I was too scared to just even raise here. my hand. Okay. Yeah, I hate to talk in so front of people. So what made you say, I want to do stand-up comedy? I loved stand-up my entire childhood. My dad always had stand-up playing. Okay. And um, yeah, I, I just I just loved it. It was my favorite thing to watch. Um, I dropped out of high school for like a hot second. I was just, then I got back in doing online school, but I was like failing all those classes because I only watched stand-up. Oh, wow, okay. And then uh, my friend at the end of high school, he gets into MIT and I start crying in his car and I was like, I'm so happy for you, but I'm just scared for myself because like, I'm a fucking failure. I don't know what uh -huh. I'm going to do. And he was like, oh, you're going to be a comedian. Like, don't worry about it. And that was the first time someone ever said that to me. Someone believed so in So shout you. out to Mikey. And I was like, yeah. oh, okay. And then... 
yeah, and then moved to LA. I did my first open mic actually at the comedy store when I was 19. Okay. Ran off the stage crying and I said, okay. <laughs> but you got on, you got picked. Yeah, yeah. The well, I, yeah. I interned at Laugh Stub with Makala Lee, who okay. now runs a bunch of shows in New York. And she kind of took me under her wing and she taught me a lot about stand Because I was like, I was like, oh, this is rehearsed. I thought you just got up there and just, and she's like, no, bitch. Like, you yes, write your joke. And yeah. so she like, you know, she was like my, I like just was her little shadow. Okay. And she used to run Comedy Juice and stuff. Well, so, like, so you, had a, you, had a, me in. you did have a little bit of a yeah and because she a, she was always yoda. at comedy juice at the improv and yoda. so like she would just sneak my little 19 year old ass in there okay. and i would just like watch and like learn. So you moved here at 19 i moved here i dropped out of college i moved here at 19 that's, that's and then crazy I didn't, to me yeah yeah and then when i didn't did you, start, when, i was 23 and that's still that's when i started doing stand-up. yeah yeah I was, but i didn't start stand up till like late Oh really? I was almost thirty. Yeah, yeah. Oh, because you're thirteen years in. Yeah, like yeah. I mean, you're thirteen. Yeah, and yeah. I was, but I I had performed most of my my life, so I always had a base. I don't understand people like oh, I was working in an office. Yeah, and no I way. want to tell jokes. Well, like Fahim was like, like an that, engineer. Right? He was like yeah, yeah, yeah he yeah. was just like in college or. And then Jackie Fabulous was a full on lawyer. Mm-hmm. So funny. A lot of lawyers, a lot of yeah. Liz engineers. Glazer also. Yeah. yeah. Teachers. Yeah. yeah. Rachel Mack, she was a teacher. Yeah. She's, I think she's still teaching. She'll, yeah, she's still, God, she's funny. Such a great comic. Wait, yeah. okay, should we? Let's get into this. I know you have one you want to start with. Well, I don't know if I want to start with it, but I will <laughs> start with it. It's especially how, how many emails do you guys get a week? A lot? So sometimes we have so many we have to like do, okay. we have to split into like two episodes and okay. we read them on the Patreon. And there's this still was... so many that we haven't read. I know. But you figured out your password because I know that was a oh thing. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, he figured out the password. Yeah. This is pretty horrific. We just got this mm, right before this episode started, but uh, I'll just dive right in. Okay. DIY, get rid of a baby. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Mm, Laugh it up, guys. Laugh it up. (laughs) You know us You're not going to be laughing at the end of this. My ex-girlfriend worked at a crappy restaurant in high school during 2012. She told me that her coworker, Bridget, had a dark secret that got her fired. Ooh. When Bridget was in high school, she got pregnant. This was the late 90s, early 2000s in the Midwest. So you can only imagine how much uh, vitriol. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Don't know that word. Vitriol she would have been met with had this been public knowledge. She then hid the pregnancy from her school, family, and most of her friends by wearing baggy clothes. Then, as pregnant people do, she gave birth, albeit in the bathroom at her parents' house. Oh, my God. That is so fucking scary. Fearing the repercussions of teenage pregnancy. No. She. No. Suffocated the baby. Oh, my oh God. dude. And hid the corpse in her closet. This is like that story that just happened at that. Remember that girl in the, in the hospital, hospital? Yeah. at Temecula or something? Yep. Somewhere in California, she gave what? birth to the baby in the hospital and then threw it in the trash can. Yeah. And then her and her mom are going to jail for attempted murder or yeah. for murder. Wow. So, so glad we got the laughs out of the way. Oh, you yeah. guys, this podcast is such a hoot. Okay. He had the corpse in the closet. Right before we started this, I read a comment that was like, hey, can we get some light stories in here? No, well, and I thought, you no. know, DIY... Things couldn't be that bad. But you know, we're about 40 minutes in, and I think we had a very beautiful conversation with yeah, Mateen, yeah. so it's it's all about balance, <laughs> sweethearts. <laughs> well, don't worry. It's going to get worse, probably. Oh. Uh, there's so- oh, good. Yes. Okay. Gabrielle. There soon began a smell emitting from her closet. Oh, because she kept that- She kept the corpse there. She kept the, she kept the goo. Oh, my God. Her mom investigated and found the dead child, and immediately- Called the police. Wouldn't you be scared of your kid? I mean, I know that you. Yeah, that's terrified. wild, man. That's terrified. That's. Oof. But also, how gnarly are the parents that this is what she thought the best option was? Like, on one hand, I'm like, this per- this girl has like a mark of evil in her. Yeah. But then the other part is she's doing it out of fear from her parents. Yeah. But to kill a baby, that's so. Oh no, that's God! DIY murder. This is DIY, that is DIY murder. murder. Yeah, this is abortion. DIY. Yeah. I thought there was gonna be murder. like an oh, abortion. Like yeah, I took a hanger and I, and I fished around funny. and it yeah. came out like a little hook, yeah. jelly bean. Yeah. Wouldn't yeah. that have been funny? Uh, that would have been a laugh. There was no yeah. laughs no, no, no. in here. No laughs to be had. Like why would you email that to somebody? Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, like, <laughs> no, the thing, some things that people say, like there's yeah, girl yeah, email saying yeah. that she like cut off her vagina with scissors outside she of a did hospital. Do that because there she was did. too much labia or something. Oh my god! Well, in case you guys were wondering, so if you might be asking, <laughs> how Bridget was able to was able to be having jobs and walking around in the world after doing something like that, well. Okay, wait. So you might be asking, how is it? How is Bridget able to be having jobs and walking around in the world after doing something like that? Well, here's the real kicker: what? the cop that arrested Bridget didn't tell her her Miranda rights, so she couldn't be tried for her crimes. Oh, all in all, she did like three to six months in juvie and <gasps> was given a far less charge than murder and hiding a corpse. Mm. Oh. I believe she had multiple children when she worked with my girlfriend. So she's a serial killer, or she had. No, she just I think no. She just she just murked the one. She murked the one, and then and then she pumped out a few more. Wow. (laughs) What is? I mean, if you we could just Google Bridget kills baby. Bridget kills baby, and just drag her through the mud. Now, you guys, I have a story. It's called. Do it yourself. Get a meth pipe out of your own asshole. Okay. And it's Oof. it's a it's a some people love to write in odysseys, and uh-huh. this is this is a this is an odyssey. I think it's going to be a good one. Wow. Mateen, Here do you want to do you want to like read part of it and then pass it off, or do you want to just let, uh, let me see? Or do you want do you want to listen? Oh, sorry, sweet. Let, let me see. I wish I didn't prepare for this. Okay. I can read it to you like a little story time too, if yeah. you'd like. Where do I start? I'm Before I became a nurse practitioner, that story. yeah, you I just start right up at the top, sweetie. And no, that's that's where she started. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's how she. It's there. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no, <laughs> perfect, perfect. My bad, my bad. I feel like so old. I had to make the font a little bigger. Uh, where do I start? Before I became a nurse practitioner, I worked in the ER for just about ten years. Here's something I'll never forget: an image I can't erase. Just when you think you've seen it all, the ER gods come back and they bless you with another moment of. Oh. Right. So at this time, the uh, this wretched experience, I was working the day shift in the ER as a nurse. It was during COVID time. So nobody had time for bullshit, honestly. Like, please don't put shit in your body. People <laughs> are fucking dying. Mm-hmm. But okay, realistically, it's still going down. Yeah. Anyway, it's the ER, so expect nothing less than a shit show, right? right. Okay, so here we go. I start my shift at 0600 hours in the morning. Reality is we get there a little early. So it's to crack a fucking dong in the motherfucking morning. I get there. I get my assignment. It's so busy that we're still holding people from the day before, if not longer. So, you know, patients are uh, displeased. Families are unhappy, whatever. But rest assured, one of the rooms had a new patient in it. Again, it's 6 (laughs) a.m. have barely started drinking my coffee. The night nurse gives me the report on three who were previously there the day before. No biggie. Now on to the new patient. Night nurse says he originally came in with the police for blisters on his feet and pain due to open wounds on his feet. Yeah, nice. (laughs) It was the summer. Here it gets like 120 fucking degrees over the summer. I'm not exaggerating. Apparently he was walking on asphalt all day and uh, no shoes on and basically burned the soles of his feet. Oh. So I'm like, okay, what's the plan? Like, how bad are the blisters? She says, oh, we took care of that. He's all bandaged up. We gave him antibiotics, but he needs some uh, conscious uh, sedation. Okay. I don't know what that is, but she tells us, oh, conscious, conscious sedation, sedation is a hassle. Okay. You get a whole team together and it's basically where you give drugs to sedate him enough to perform an otherwise painful procedure okay. remove foreign objects from his body put a non-broken shoulder or hip back into place okay. so they don't remember it and they don't necessarily feel the pain from the procedure but not enough damage to require the operating room so they just had to drug him up to do this uh, i'm like rolling my eyes into another dimension because i'm like why the fuck does foot blisters wounds need conscious uh sedation uh-huh. so she goes well he has a meth pipe stuck in his asshole. Yes, he does. And of course and he does. And there it is. Because <laughs> of course why he does. would we have a podcast where we don't have a dead baby, meth, like, of course. And meth sodomy. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So the pipe is in his ass. Okay. He's got a pookie pipe up his 
A yeah, meth pipe he's sitting on Pookie. In his eye. So he, I'm like, <laughs> wait, what? She's like, girl, I don't know. <laughs> He was about to be discharged, and he said Girl. he had a meth pipe in his ass, and he couldn't get it out. Good, yeah. Day shift problem now, and she dips out. Yeah, he totally he's he's totally with it. So it's like, I don't know, maybe six thirty in the morning by then, and I'm like, okay, uh, I I'll see what I can do about this. He was homeless, but he's a nice guy. Not gonna lie, probably a little untreated mental health you, you think you think <laughs> yeah you think no she goes not gonna lie <laughs> not gonna lie okay, well, well, thank God. thanks for keeping I also, it real i also what i like about this is that he comes in for like these blistered feet and then on the way out he's like oh uh by for, the way uh, by the way oh uh, what you guys uh, i got this meth pipe on my asshole what if he didn't even say anything though and they just found it and he's like oh Oh. He, he had to be in pain. Cause, yeah. Because they wouldn't have looked for it. No, no, no. Because if it was his feet, they wouldn't have touched. They wouldn't no, have given of course. Him an X-ray. Wow. Um, I mean, he was probably sitting weird. He was on a lot of drugs. Maybe he was a little drunk. Bounce but ultimately. I'd say he's probably on meth. Yeah. I, I, I think <laughs> it would be safe to say to that. Say. Also, if there's a pipe up there, like who knows what chemicals are leaking and out into that haunted shattered. Shattered. And... Like, what was it? Was he trying to smoke meth? Out of his asshole? Out of his asshole? Well, apparently, yeah, because it think you absorb things more when you put it up your ass. And then also you get it, super horny. Yeah. But you have to suck in. So well, even, if you, put, meth, even you know? if you put coke and like shut up your ass, we learned because our old podcast producer was a, a meth and heroin addict. Uh -huh. And he, apparently it absorbs more into like the mucous membrane of your but asshole. for a pipe, it's to smoke it, you have to put it in the pipe and yeah. smoke it. So I'm right. Like, I'm he thinking it was just was horny. Meth, was gets, meth gets yeah. you horny. Okay. And so he's probably just like, oh, I'm horny. And yeah, then and he was like, I love asshole. meth so much I want to fuck it. Yeah. So have you yeah. guys smoked meth? No. No, no. but I, I did but I accidentally, hear that good good. I accidentally did take meth one time because I thought I was taking Molly. Molly. A lot but of I do that. yeah, but you I went for three days? I was up for three days. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. And I, I called my parents. I was 19 years old and I called my parents and I was like, okay, I have to tell you guys this. I did meth and I don't know what to do. And they were like, Well, you're an idiot and just go to sleep. And I said, Hey, guess what? I'm on day I'm three on and meth. I fucking can't because I'm yeah. on meth. Yeah. And now I'm seeing the shadow people. Yeah. That's what happens when and that's why meth. you don't buy Molly from a stripper in Anaheim. You do not buy Molly from a stripper yeah. in Anaheim. Yeah. Don't take the, don't do that. No. Um, where was that? He was homeless. He's a nice guy. <laughs> not going to lie. Like a little that. untreated mental health and a lot of drugs. Maybe he was a little drunk, but ultimately okay. he was chill. So I asked him, so what's up? I heard you had blisters on your feet. What happened? Why did the cops bring you in? Basically I ignored the whole meth pipe in the ass part and just uh built and established some sort of working relationship with the guy you know a working relationship yeah, yeah. a rapport bedside matter is is on point yeah he absolutely. goes yeah i was walking down the road and i fell and the cops thought i was drunk because i couldn't walk but i could not walk because my feet had all those sores and blisters from walking without shoes on the asphalt okay i it wasn't dare gonna ask the reason for walking with no shoes because he had shoes with him oh Okay. <laughs> he, yes, yes, wanted, yes. he wanted to uh, yeah. get closer to the earth. What do they call it? Grounding. 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 Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He wanted to be more. He said, let with. me unplug. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have you guys ever walked on like hot asphalt? It's horrible. Yeah. yeah. It's the child. worst thing ever. And, yeah. he's also, and he's carrying the meth pipe and he's like, this is inconvenient. I don't have any pockets. What should I do with it? I know. She's like, up my ass. Yeah, I don't, don't want to break Maybe it. Maybe that's what it was. The cops. Yeah. He didn't want to get oh. caught by the cops. Yeah. Mm. Um. So I'm like, okay. So then what? The cops saw the blisters, right? They didn't believe you. He said the officer did not believe me, but he basically said I had to come to the hospital, which is not uncommon for law enforcement to do because they often have to pass the buck. So they just send the problem to the ER. Um, have you guys been arrested? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Both? Oh, yeah. Cause you guys yeah, yeah, DUIs. yeah. We're, yeah, we're DUI queens. DUI yeah. queens. Did you yeah. ever have to blow anything? What, the breathalyzer? Yeah. No. Oh, like, oh, like for, for my car? car? Yeah. No, I had to sell my car to pay for the lawyer. So oh, okay. don't worry about that. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I got mine when I was 20. So I, I lost oh, my yeah, license for three any, years. Any drop, you're fucking. I'm yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And don't been. worry. There was <laughs> quite a few drops in there. So <laughs> yeah. They said, How are you even conscious with yeah. this many drops? And I said, Sweetie, I guess I can drink like a fish. So yeah. <laughs> she was up. Mm -hmm. I, I do. <laughs> Have you been arrested? No, I've never been arrested. Okay, it's fun. sweetie, Give it try, a try it. No, <laughs> that's no. my worst nightmare. Yeah, no, oh, that's fun. That's my worst. Well, nightmare. maybe, maybe it's fun for the whites, time. but yeah, it's my worst nightmare. Yeah, no, yeah. don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, I, yeah, I. Yeah. Knock on wood. Yeah. Well, you know, just don't, don't, don't get DUI. I did. Fun. That's my worst nightmare too. Yeah. It sucks okay, honey, dick. it's giving Uber. Yeah. Are you are you sober? Um, not like legally, but I I don't drink. Okay. Not like legally. What is that? Yeah, legally? I mean, like I'm not. I'm not in a 12 step program for okay. alcohol. You drink a little bit. 
Barely, though. Barely. Like okay. I had I had uh, like two glasses of wine after my taping in January. But before then, I can't remember the last time I drank. Do you do like weed or anything? No. Oh, so you're like real sober. OK. Yeah, I don't. I know you're you're a program person. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a drug addict. So we talked about that. that. Yeah. So is this guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got that in common. Yeah. I'm Alan on. She's AA. We'd yeah. love to see it. Uh, where was I? At? And uh, he's on math. Uh, he was like, he could, uh, okay. I was like, oh, okay. I'm sure the night nurse told you that we're going to give you some drugs to sedate you and we're going to take you out, right? He said, could you just give me one more chance to try to get it out myself? Okay. I really don't want to uh, be sedated like that. In my head, I was like, okay. fuck it. Why not? It's not even 7 a.m. Yeah. I don't really want to do a conscious sedation at this hour. No. I haven't even finished my coffee. Why not For let God him do it sake. himself? For God's sake. I'm sure... I'm going to uh, close the curtain and I'm going to give you a little bit of privacy. Here's some gloves. This is not a good idea. Uh, let I, me know. I'm so horrified. Really <laughs> what the this fuck is, is going to happen? This is malpractice as a nurse, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You she can't is. do this. No, yeah. because I, I'm sorry, baby girl, but this, this is very haunted. Yeah, she's like, I got to finish my coffee. She's like, on. I'm tired. She takes off her own gloves, gives it to him, and she's like, just go. She's whatever. like, you fish. Half at it. Yeah. It's your body. Yeah. You know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. You up there. You can get it out. <laughs> okay. I figured we had an agreement. Uh, I had a minute to sit down and go through the task for the day. So I walked in the back to the nurse's station. I sat down, started mm. finishing my coffee because that's what I needed to do. Yeah, honey, we all got priorities, sis. So exactly. Okay. She keep, she's mentioned that like three times already. <laughs> my coffee. I looked at the computer, went through the charts and orders. Suddenly, I noticed something out of the corner of my eye. Okay. So I closed the curtain completely. However, being that it's in the ER, the curtains don't go all the way uh, to the ground for cleanliness imagine purposes. Imagine that. Right. I guess you could say there's a gap between the floor and between uh, the curtain that is probably at least a foot, maybe a foot and a half uh -huh. in height, just to keep the curtain from dragging on the floor. You know, germs and stuff. It's a hospital. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I can see the man's ass and balls from the bottom of the curtain, and he literally got a glove on his hand, and he got his whole hand up his asshole. So he's like, he's like crouching he's down. Yeah. He's like well, one technique. guy, one cut, one guy, one jar style. Yeah. 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 And, and he's trying to fish Fi out yeah, he's yeah. Fishing. his he's pookie. Fishing. Yeah. That's exactly what she says. He's crouched down in a yeah. weird position on the floor, Imagine trying this. to get this thing out, like kneel down. So yeah, so he's kneeled down. So, but she knows he has the thing up his ass. Yeah. I, yeah. She, and she, yes. goes, she goes, honey, my coffee is getting cold. That's the thing. Yeah. So that's when she was like, here, just take also, my gloves. Do it's it yourself. not like it's like a fucking like <laughs> drumstick up his ass. It's it's a meth stick. It's a literal pookie. And if it, it can break. It's and a glass. Yes, and she, she can can she, yeah. I didn't stop at Duncan just to have it go. <laughs> what am My I? My ice is melting. Come on. She's like, it's expensive. <laughs> Seven dollars yeah. for a, a large, oh honey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to well, slurp mommy's milk. She got yeah. to. And she goes, I nearly spit out my coffee. Oh, well, <laughs> what is we can't that? waste a drop uh, of the yeah. brown gold. What's it called? Amer and America's fueled on Duncan. Yeah, yeah. No, that is yes. yes. And yeah. meth, yeah. apparently. Okay. I didn't know what to do. I froze. I had never seen anything like this before. And not to mention the whole time God, I was in stories. training a new nurse. So she's sitting by watching this shit show. And I'm like, yes, I know. It's not even 7 a.m. And here we are hoping... This man gets the meth pipe out of his asshole on his own so we don't have to sedate him and do a big old procedure to get it out of him. Just do the fucking procedure. Just do the fucking procedure. Hey. I also like that she's telling it to the other nurse that she's trained. She's like, I know, come on. And the other nurse is probably like, shouldn't we be doing something about this? Yes. No, literally. Yeah, this is, this, it goes on forever. <laughs> And it's describing the coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> By this point, my coffee is... My mm. medium roast was cooling. Yeah. She, it goes, uh, no, no. it felt uh, invasive to keep watching, so I had to stop and carry on with reviewing the orders. Why don't you stop him? Hey, hey, hey. Why didn't you stop it him and say, hey, invasive? there's a guy with a meth pipe? Hey, <laughs> it's almost like it's your job to help people. It what felt is going on, girl? To keep to watching? Yeah. What the fuck is wrong with you? You're what? in a hospital. This is your job. <laughs> This is your job. So, suddenly the curtain gets stretched back. And he's like, hey, I got it out. <laughs> I'm like, clap, clap, oh. clap, clap. Awesome. Oh, you know, just trying to be a supportive nurse. Uh, so no, I you're not. Because <laughs> you didn't do your job. Why would you let this man do this? So I take my trainee and we go in there and I basically told her, well, we have to make sure that it's not broken just to make sure that there's no glass so or anything anyway. that could have been retained just to make sure that everything is safe. So I asked him, where is the meth pipe? And he folded it in a uh, paper towel and he put it in his pocket. 
Okay. Gotta use it for later. Because honestly, where do you even find meth pipes? It's probably hard to come by. No, no, no. They're not that oh, hard to come by. You can get by. them at like a wreck. So meth pipe is just a pipe with meth in it. So yeah. you can smoke meth out of a... Oh, well, that shows my... Like a, a, a weed pipe, pipe really. Yeah. Oh! The yeah. pipe is just whatever you smoke out of They, they sell oh. them at like... At for some a, reason, I thought it was like different. No. They sell them at smoke shops. So, so usually like crack or meth, you have the bulb at the end. Yes. And you smoke it like that. You freebase it. But yeah. Anything you can smoke out. Oh my god! Well, what a beautiful. Uh, even, even so an don't apple. say you never learned anything on this podcast, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Period. Um, he goes. Uh, it's it literally has shit on it. I said, okay, so okay. with yeah, the gloves, yeah. put, put on a judgmental the towel. Bit. He said, put on it. She said, I put on the towel. So it's wrapped in a paper towel and place, uh, placed on and throw it away. Uh, the hand towel. It's drug paraphernalia. So I'm trying to do the right thing since I'm training a new nurse. No, you're not. You're, you're not, not doing the right no, thing. No, you're not training a new you nurse. Do you're literally you did the wrong thing. Yeah, you, you started the, with the you wrong thing. You did the thing. wrong yeah. thing. You're like journaling about yeah. how you want to fucking marry your coffee. Like yeah. this is yeah. so weird. It's 7 a.m. So you're complaining about how it's it's too early. Uh, you need to yeah, no, babes. Yeah. This I, is very much weird. Yeah, she goes, I threw it in the sharps container. I told her after expecting it. It is in one piece. There's no broken glass. I'm thinking this is great now so we don't have to do a conscious sedation. He got out on his own. Uh, his feet are already taken care of. The yeah. blisters and the wounds are Now I don't bandage. even believe they're taken care of. I just feel of. like something bad's about so to So I'm like, again. cool, we can discharge him. Perfect. While I'm explaining to the doctor that we no longer have to get the conscious sedation because the patient was able to get out on his own, I glanced over, curtain is still open, and he's trying to get the meth <laughs> pipe out of the sharps container with his bare hands. Holy fuck. Because he Holy fuck. is a meth addict. Because he's a meth <laughs> addict and he wants to use a pipe later. <laughs> meth? Smoke meth and then put it up his asshole again. The things that meth makes you do <laughs> is actually horrifying. No, and he's no, digging like, around. How good is this drug, man? It's no, that it's like, good. It's it's that man. good. D doesn't it kind of pique your interest, though? Yeah, like, like man. yes, okay, yes. But when I did that that Anaheim meth, it it didn't seem that good. Because you took a pill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah when yeah. you're when you're fucking free basing meth, can you imagine how much fun you're having? Okay, we should kind of do it and like, <laughs> like kind of like how, how people do I'm down. how people do ayahuasca. Just have a That's what we should do. Yeah, in this room on this podcast, we should record an episode and call it the meth of. The methisode. The methisode. We all sit in here and or we do meth. meth. Mateen, are you coming back? I'll we'll come back. We'll okay, sweetie. Method, we'll all yeah. do meth. Bring yeah. your daughter. Mark, right? honey. We'll all do yeah. meth. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. This is going to get flagged on YouTube. And, <laughs> honey, <laughs> all of our episodes. <laughs> we have no career, but yeah, can't continue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, I forget. Uh, we yeah, have he's with his bare hands. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm like, sir, that's dangerous. I don't think you should do that. There are tons of needles in there. I don't want you to get poked. Yeah, he's gonna listen to you. Also, like he cares. Yeah, he, he, like he cares. Has shit on it, and it was in his ass. He doesn't care. It as I'm walking towards the room, he proceeds to somehow get it out of the sharps container and move it over to the counter of the sink and starts washing it with soap and water to get the shit out of it. Mind you, his feet are still full of bandages. And he can he can barely stand. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so it's almost like this he's on meth. Worst. He's on meth. Yeah, yeah. He was still being super nice, yeah. and he was reassuring me that, "Hey, it's no big <laughs> deal. I just, I need this. I just need it. Okay, yeah. relax." Yeah. Wow. After after a while, washing it with soap and water, I tried to explain to him that it was probably unsafe, and he thanked me for my opinion yeah. and said after he washed it, he would be leaving. I asked him a, if, a gentleman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I asked him if I could wait a, if he could wait a moment for me to get him discharge papers. And he says, sure. <laughs> she, she sees all, and she goes, um, honey, I got to get you, I got to get your uh, John yeah, Hancock I gotta, on these. I got to get yeah. back to my coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I walked the over, real tragedy I of the walked story. over to the doctor, explained everything we, myself and my trainee, had just witnessed. That's not your trainee. That's your yeah. hostage at this point. Yeah. The doctor was just uh, as much shocked as I was. Uh, when he heard the story. The doctor wanted me to get security involved because of the drug paraphernalia. Mm. Oh. Again, it's not even 7 a.m. So oh. Again, my coffee is getting, <laughs> getting cold. cold. Yeah, honey. Or, or warm. Got that good good. Yeah. 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 So I said, okay, we'll take care of it. Knowing damn well, I was not getting security involved. We came back this to the so room. Funny. The curtain was shut. Op I opened the curtain and he was nowhere to be found. We had witnessed a DIY foreign body removal in the ER at 6.30 on a Sunday morning. I love that. On a Sunday. Yeah, the image of him, DIY foreign body removal, like digging that. in his ass, viewable through the under the curtain, will just forever be engraved in my brain. My poor trainee probably wanted to die. He got it out 
He got it out though. Big W for him. Yeah, big. And he was an overall pretty chill guy. Yeah, yeah. We carried on what we assumed uh, to be a uh, folk of a day. F U K O L. I've never seen it spelled that way. Is that some new shit? I, I don't know what the hell Fuck of a day, like every other day in the ER. Yeah. Y'all are the best. Sorry for the essay. No, you're not. I figured that. <laughs> Um, I, I hope your coffee turned out okay. Yeah, I figured yeah. that if I still had this mental image, I had to plant, uh, plant it, uh, paint the best picture of a homeless man yeah. with blistered feet digging a meth pipe out of his asshole at 6.30 a.m. P.S. Gabby, you're hot. I bought your merch and never stopped fangirling you. Oh, that's sweet. You. Thank you. Me and my coworker frequently dance to pharmacy whole music now regularly. Yeah, it's good music. Okay, so you got a coffee-loving fan, huh? They, they Please do more of that because it's so fucking funny. Not that you're on hold, the dancing. Wow. Also, fuck being hold with pharmacies, I guess. Yeah, fuck being Oh, hold. you have that video. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hot. Okay. My cousin loves you, too. Oh, that's, that's sweet. So yeah. Well, now here's the thing. That uh, that was a mountain of a story. That was that was a fuck. Who like? Why would you sit down and write that email? Well, what's funny is that she probably wrote that in while there was also some like atrocity happening in the ER. And she was like, <laughs> oh, oh my god, I, I, she I was got like, I gotta get this to email. This is yeah. not a podcast. Got, it's like a severed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he's like, please glue it back. She's the like, she's like, <laughs> she's like, well, the the deadline's coming up yeah. for tea time, so <laughs> I gotta get the story in, in, in. Oh my god. People put a lot of shit in their ass. I mean, that's like Isn't one of the crazy? major things. Yeah, my friend, his girlfriend got like a 13-inch dildo stuck up there. Yeah. People love stuff yeah. shoving shit in their asses. And no, they're obsessed it's always, with it. Oh, I fell on that. That's, always. Yeah. That's the thing. No, they love it. And it's like, no, you were bouncing on Imagine, it with intention yeah. and you didn't lube it up the correct way. It, it sucks. It's and like you got a, that gorilla like grip vacuum. asshole. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is a vacuum. It's a vacuum. Can you imagine the amount of people that have shit stuck in their ass for a long, for like weeks at a time because yeah. they're too afraid to do anything about it? There's yeah. definitely more people with shit stuck up their ass than babies in closets, I hope. I would hope so too. <laughs> I would, But you know what? On this episode, it's really a two for two. Yeah. It honestly we have the is. same amount of kids, corpses, and closets that we do meth pipes and assholes. Uh, it's a healthy balance. Is that and the first murder that's been in this podcast? No. no. Oh. And it won't no. be the last okay. either. No, probably not the we first dead baby one We had a murderer like, right in and we're like, what's going on here? I'm but pretty sure like, you guys have some prisoners that like are into this. Oh, Absolutely. yes. So very much. Absolutely. Okay. But yeah. you guys, we People actually are, are at time right meth. now. Mateen, is there anything you want to plug before we move on over to Patreon? Yes. Please follow me at Mateen Stewart and make sure you guys check out my podcast scumbags of history uh that i host with Britton schmidt uh we release a new episode every monday Hell okay yeah. so cute so yeah. cute Hell yeah okay guys that was our we'll see you diabolical uh episode love you guys peace bye guys hey!